What do you do if there's no place to store your food? My wife and I have four children. We have a big family and we cook big meals. After we're done eating, it's cleanup time and everything goes into Tupperware, Ziplocs, and refrigeration. But what do you do in the 18th century if there's no place cold and dry to store your leftovers? Don't get me wrong, it's not like they didn't have answers to the problem of food storage. A lot of people had root cellars, they would even store food in their well where it was nice and cold or a spring house. They were preserving food with acid, lots of pickled eggs and pickled onions and that sort of thing. But this, this is interesting. You would never look at this and think, this is a food preservation method. What I have right here is a standing crust pie. Now, it is a pie. You can eat this whole thing if you want to. But these shells, as they were referred to, sometimes even coffins or caskets, they're a holding vessel. They're not necessarily meant to be eaten. On the day that you cook them or a couple days after, you might consume the whole thing. But actually, oftentimes, food is stored inside of here. It's sealed off, and this might sit on the shelf for a week or two before you consume what's inside of it. These little meat pies are so intriguing to me as an American from the Midwest. This concept is pretty far from me. Now, if you live over in Europe, you might be very familiar with this. The idea of using flour and water and butter, essentially some kind of fat, to create a bowl, something to cook in, instead of going and digging up some clay and making a redware vessel, I, I think it's brilliant. I don't know how somebody just thought of that one day, but this turns into a discardable, portable way to carry your food. So if you're gonna go on a few days trip, you make yourself a few pies, put them in your bag, they're ready to go. You're just gonna eat what's inside of it. And the crust you throw out along the way, it didn't cost you anything. You didn't waste anything on this. And you don't have a dish that you still have to carry around and clean and worry about. Now the pie crust that I wanna make today isn't nearly as big or as fancy as anything that you'll just come across often in these cookbooks. It's from a new system of domestic cookery and it's very simple. We're gonna take water, butter, lard equal parts, a little bit of salt and flour and mix them together. And it doesn't even give you amounts in the recipe. A lot of times they're just referenced, like people already know, use a standing crust for this. The consistent thing about them is, is that you need to boil water with fat in it. Today, we're going to use butter and lard. If you just have butter at home or just lard, or if you have some suet, you can use any of those. But I wanted to mix these two. And so we're gonna take two and a half cups of flour. We're gonna to add to that a half a cup of water and a little bit more. So I just put a couple of tablespoons on top of that, but it just wasn't quite wet enough without a little bit extra water. Then we got three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of lard and a pinch of salt. It's really easy. Now, because this is a hot paste, I went ahead and I stirred it all together with a spoon inside the bowl because I don't want to burn my hands. Be careful if you're making this at home. Now that it's all mixed together, we're just going to knead it. We're going to knead it for five or 10 minutes. It's a nice consistency. It's really easy to knead when it's warm like this, kind of like warm Play-Doh. And it's actually very comfortable and soothing. So, you know, flour your surface, knead away, and in about five and 10 minutes, we'll be able to let her cool down. After you get this all kneaded up and it's nice and smooth, you're gonna roll it into kind of like a little burrito. And then once you do, you're gonna cut it in half. And this is gonna become enough for both of our pie crusts. After you've got it cut in half, you're gonna take off a piece that's about as big as a walnut. And we're gonna do this to both sides. We're gonna ball that up and that's gonna be the top of your crust after we fill the pie and we need to seal it up. And this piece right here, we can flatten it down, and that is going to be our pie crust. And that is what we're gonna to use to form up and make a shell out of. Now these need to sit and they need to cool for a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish balling this up, flatten this out, put them on a plate, and we're gonna set them under a damp cloth for about four hours and let them cool down. When scanning through 18th century cookbooks looking for standing crust recipes, you're probably going to find a lot of really impressive ones, and you won't necessarily see the everyman pie crust. But this one repeats over and over and over again in so many cookbooks, word for word. This particular one is from London Art of Cookery by John Farley, and it reads like this. If you would make a standing crust for great pies, do it as follows. Take a peck of flour and six pounds of butter boiled in a gallon of water. A peck is 14 pounds, by the way. Skim it off into the flour. 
and as little of the liquor as you can. Work it up well into a paste, and then pull it into pieces till it's cold. Then make it up into whatever form you please. This paste is proper for the walls of a goose pie. We're talking a humongous pie here. And that would be an example of either probably a really fancy table that's feeding a lot of people or somebody who needs to preserve a lot of meat really quickly. Now this simple pie crust, it's not something that I found in a lot of cookbooks. I think that the author is anticipating that you understand how to do this because it's already part of customs. It's already part of what people do. Now you do find more extravagant crust. You find crust with eggs, things that you might intend to eat the crust with, things that are supposed to be more flavorful and more fun and maybe even more flaky. But this crust, and the reason that it shouldn't be anything difficult to make at home is because you can't really mess it up. When we think about pie crust today, we think cold butter, nice flaky layers, don't work the dough too much. That's not how this is at all. We're creating dough concrete essentially, and we're not always gonna be eating this crust. It's no big deal if it turns out tough. What we want is something that's structurally sound. We let these sit for about four hours. You can make them overnight if you want to and let them sit all the way overnight. The whole point is that we want them cool enough to be able to work and to hold their shape. So we're gonna attempt now to form this up around a bottle. Right now what I'm doing is just trying to mold this crust to this bottle, using it to create the inside hole that we need inside of the crust, but not have the crust crack open. We don't want anything to leak out of this. We want this to be as airtight as possible. It's nice that this dough is kind of like the consistency of modeling clay. And as you work it in your hands, it warms up just a little bit. You can kind of mold it that way, but we're getting really close. And I think I've learned a couple of things on this one that will help us along the way on the next one. This fought me a little bit as I was taking it off of the bottle. I wanted to stick to it. And I thought beforehand I should flour this on the inside and I decided not to do it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flour in here, try to reform it and see what happens. A little trick that seems to be working is as you're forcing this pie crust to go up the bottle, pushing from the bottom with your pinky or with your ring finger and kind of moving it up as you rotate it seems to really be helping out. And then once you do that, then you can get it exactly how you want it to at the top, but you'll have enough, enough crust up top to work with. These are looking fantastic and I'm really excited about them because I've never done it before. It fought me a little bit. As you go, the temperature of your hands heats the dough up for the crust. And as you do that, it becomes a little bit more pliable and easy to work. Then when you're done with it and you set it aside, it cools back down and it firms up so you don't have to worry so much about damaging it when you pick it back up. I wanna make two pies today. We're gonna to clear the table off and get the meat ready. The first one is a Cheshire pie and that's gonna have apples in it. It's gonna have some nutmeg and some sugar. It's gonna be a savory and sweet pie and we're gonna try that one right away because I'm really excited. That's gonna be really good. The other one is just going to be a pork pie and that is meant to be preserved. We're gonna set that off on the pantry shelf and have it in a few days. I'm whisking an egg up real quick so we can seal the lids on top of these pies nice and tight. We're kind of going to use this as a glue. I'm going to cover the whole outside of this pie with this egg wash. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to do anything other than give it a nice color, but I do like an egg wash on my pie crust. So when they come out of the oven, they just pop and they look really pretty when you bring them to the table. I got these covered in the egg wash. I cut a couple of holes in the lid just for vent because there's gonna be some moisture building up in there. Now, if you're making this in a home oven, you're gonna put this in the oven about 375 and it's gonna take anywhere between an hour, hour and a half. So just keep an eye on it as it goes. We want that pork to be fully cooked and we want those walls to be firm. In this oven, we've got it up around 500 degrees right now. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't go too far too fast. And as we baby it, we'll get there. These smell incredible and they look fabulous. I'm so glad that we did that egg wash on the outside of them. They've got a good sound to them. They're ready to go. Let's go try them. All right, 
I'm ready to try this. It came out of the oven. It looks beautiful. It smells wonderful. You can see this crust is like, it's hard to break. It's thick. It is a vessel. You've got pork and apple both on the inside. Now I'm going to go ahead and try a bite of the crust because why not? Let's see what it's all about. But I expect the apple to just pair really well with that pork. There's a little bit of sugar, a little bit of nutmeg in here. This is going to be a beautiful, sweet and savory bite with a crunch from the crust. Let's see. Mm-hmm. That is one of the best pies I've ever had.